Whether it's for singing at the top of your lungs while enjoying some stunning panoramic views or swapping stories from the slopes, we all love ski lifts. It's easier than hiking, cheaper than a helicopter, and a lot quieter than a snowmobile. So it's no wonder they're the most popular uphill people mover. But ever wonder how they work? In today's video, we'll take you through the basic mechanics of the most popular types of ski lifts. First up, let's look into the classic fixed grip. If you're old enough to be called a millennial, you've probably ridden the classic fixed grip chair. These are basically a looping steel cable with a large at each end. Carriers, which are a couple of chairs in this case, are suspended from the cable and fastened with a mechanical grip. This grip works like a vise and is tightened around the cable to prevent the chair from sliding back. Each season, a chair gradually slides backwards, which is why lines are regularly painted on the cable. The paint marks you see actually serve as a visual indicator to the lift mechanic of how far the chair has moved. Don't worry though, if the paint mark is far away, chairs are regularly moved every few seasons to make sure there's even wear on the cable. And you've probably seen those stories of towers that form the line. It's these towers which keep the cable from falling to the ground deep down below. Where they're installed depends entirely on the budget, geography, and weather, and they're installed in place with either a crane or a helicopter. The towers are capped with cross arms that support sheaves, which are basically groups of wheels. The cable can either go above or below these sheave assemblies, but for the vast majority of towers, the cable passes over the sheaves, with the exception of when the lift is about to climb a steeper part. When traveling under adds tension to the cable, allowing it to achieve a more drastic angle, which we definitely do not want. And here's how a gondola ski lift works. The ski lift adopts its name from the Italian term gondola, which is a typical flat-bottomed rowing boat, and it's one of the most popular and widely used modes of cable transportation. It's got a super complicated structure that's driven and supported from above by cable. The gondola lift is made up of a loop of steel wires, strung between two stations and points, and it also includes transitional supporting towers. Now coming to the technology, gondola uses a rather simple one, where a clamp goes over a rail at various end stations and destinations. This mechanism helps in pushing the clamp jaws open, allowing the lift to rise off the cable. The cable is then caught and gripped by a slow-moving chain. The chain propels the gondola around and to the end of the primary pulley wheel. But the gondola lift movement is slow, unlike the traditional fixed chairs, which makes it super comfortable and safe enough for skiers to get out of the lift and continue their skiing adventure and fun with zero injuries and no embarrassing moments. And now coming to the modern high-speed detachable. With changing times and tech, now more than ever, ski resorts are beginning to replace place fixed grip lifts with larger capacity high speed lifts. With more people skiing and the introduction of mega passes like the Icon and Epic Pass, resorts are in need of a greater uphill capacity, and we all know that high speed detachable chairs are much faster and bigger than their boomer counterparts. And this modern chair, as the name suggests, detaches from the cable. In fact, high speed chairs are 2.4 times faster than their fixed grip ancestors. These detachable chairs often go at speeds of 1,200 feet per minute against 500 feet per minute for fixed grip chairs. In theory, a fixed grip chair might go just as fast, but imagine hopping off and on a 14 mile per hour chair. So incredibly uncomfortable and embarrassing. Apart from one major exception, high speed detachables function very similarly to fixed grip lifts. The high speed detachable chair has a grip mechanism that allows it to detach from the cable at the loading and unloading stations. So the cable actually continues to run at its fast pace while passengers load and unload at easy slow speeds, reducing the number of stops that are required by the lift. So, to detach or not to detach? Many of you might not know, but there's a whole debate among the skiers right now. So there are two teams, the traditionalists, also known as the old skiers, who want it fixed because they're used to it, and then there's the younger lot that thinks detachables are the way to go. Traditionalists actually prefer the fixed grip for a variety of reasons. Let us walk you through some. Fixed grip lifts are well suited for tougher terrain when the capacity of a high speed lift is not needed. They give you more time to recover and plenty of time to chat with your neighbors, enjoy a beer, or do anything else that you fancy. Also, although we're not exactly traditionalists, there's just something about a peaceful ride up a slow lift. You have more time to view the scenery and rest after your runs. It's also a great time to make friends on the hill if you're not too shy. We really don't mind getting stuck on a 15 minute chair ride, and we have some amazing conversations conversations up there with total random strangers. Sounds super exciting. But then, they're so outdated and boring and slow. The detachables are thankfully more popular in the West, since there's so much more land to ski on. They're quick, duh, they're super efficient, and the loading and unloading process is much smoother at slower speeds. So it's no wonder that the resorts are quickly turning to them. So how are ski lifts powered? Today, most modern lifts are powered by electric motors with secondary diesel backup drives, while old ones used pulleys and other energy generating methods to make it work. Did you know that Mad River's single chair ran entirely on diesel until 2007, when it was completely rebuilt? And it worked perfectly fine, but single chairs and pulleys are so outdated and times have changed drastically, and of course, not to mention the crazy population boom. Currently, electric motors are a cleaner and less expensive method
method to activate and turn the bull wheels than their diesel ancestors. And chances are, if you hear an engine running in these times, it's likely that the lift is using his backup diesel for whatever reason. Here's why we're done with diesel in the 21st century. Electric motors are far less expensive when used to operate the lifts as compared to diesel gear. Cherry on top, they're also environmentally friendly and compatible with the majority of our current environmental woes. The equipment, on the other hand, needs constant upkeep and maintenance. For proper operation, the carbon brushes and controls must also be cleaned and maintained regularly, just like any other machine, actually. So there's no rocket science here. Also, did you know that some ski lifts may also be controlled by computer technology? Prepared to see a great deal of innovation in this sector in the near future. So what keeps the cable from becoming too loose? On older lifts, a huge counterweight provides tension to one of the bull wheels, ensuring that the cable remains tight. But the newer lifts use hydraulic tensioning that's basically giant shock absorbers for easier adjustability and better ride quality. How do they slow down? As many of you may already know, old-fashioned ski lifts have zero slowing capability and can only move at a steady pace. When they reach the bottom, it can be super dreadful because their impact can be painful and unpleasant if you're not experienced and ready to hop off at the right moment. But the modern ski lifts, especially the big ones, can thankfully change gears and switch from a higher to a lower speed easily. Once all passengers have boarded, these machines are capable of switching back to the main cable that's faster, such as the gondolas. Then there's detachable high-speed ski lifts. Detachable lifts use a unique mechanism in which a particular cable is fastened using a strong, spring-loaded cable handle. The grip is detachable at each terminal, which helps in slowing the lift when needed. This unique technology allows the lift passengers to load and unload easily. Finally, how much electricity do ski lifts use? The amount of electricity used by a ski lift depends on a number of factors, including the lift's capacity, its size, and the weight it hauls, among many other factors, of course. A modern ski lift, for example, requires a daily operating cost of between $2,200 and $2,500, most of which goes toward electricity costs. A fully loaded double-decker chair lift or gondola lift, for example, consumes between 1,400 and 1,600 amps of power for just 10 seconds if it weighs 450 pounds. So depending on various factors, you can say that a ski lift consumes between 7.5 kilowatts at 10 horsepower to 750 kilowatts at 100 horsepower. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how a ski lift works. Pretty complicated, yet quite simple. What other invention would you like to see us cover next in our How It Works series? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. See you in the next one.